So Arsenal made it two wins in a row over Christmas with a 1-0 victory at Brighton yesterday. In this video, I look back on that performance. Hello, my name is Richard. Welcome back to my channel. Over and over and over again, Positive Arsenal channel. In this video, I can look back on yesterday's fantastic 1-0 victory away at Brighton as we made two wins out of two over Christmas. Just while I do that, I just want to make sure you are subscribing to my channel. If you're new here or if you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button down in the corner there. Please give this video a thumbs up as well. If you've got any comments at all about the performance yesterday, about the lineup, or anything to do with Arsenal, please drop them in the comments box because I do love to hear from you guys. So in terms of the team selection, then, there wasn't a lot of changes, was there, as expected. In fact, it's exactly the team that I predicted in my video um, looking ahead to this game that I made a couple of days ago. So there was only one change, actually, from the side that beat Chelsea. That was the expected change. It was a Bamiang was back in, in in place of Lacazette. Of course, Lacazette hadn't done anything wrong against Chelsea. Of course, he scored the penalty uh, and played pretty well. But obviously, a Bamiang is club captain. He had been top scorer over the last few years. And so that made sense to, to bring him in. Um, so we lined up, I say it was almost exactly the same side as against Chelsea. So it's Leno in goal, the back four, Bellerin, Holding, Pablo Mari, and Kieran Tierney. The two sitting in midfield was El Nenny and Jacka. The three just in front um, were the three young kids, uh, Martinelli, Smith Rowe, and Saka. And I say with a Babiang up front through the middle. So we were expecting a very similar kind of performance actually with the, the young players in the attacking position, giving us that energy uh, and movement. Uh, meanwhile, Brighton actually um, a bit of a surprise in their, in their lineup. They, they started with three at the back, not something that they do an awful lot. But also as well, we have three main goal scorers, Connolly, Mope and Danny Welbeck, all starting on the bench along with um, Sonny March and Trossard as well. So um, it was a strange sort of setup really from Graham Potter, but but he did have a history of getting results against Arsenal. So I felt that there might well have been a plan um, behind that. But um, as it turned out, it didn't work out that way for him. I was expecting us to come into this game with a lot of confidence and a lot of energy following the, the win against Chelwood. It didn't quite work out like that, did it? But away games never tend to be the same, do they? And this, in the end, turned out to be probably a classic away performance, you know, almost going back to the days of George Graham. In the first half, we, we, we kept things nice and tight. There wasn't a lot of chances at either end. Both teams looked a little bit nervous, actually. Um, importance of the game in terms of the league position maybe came through. So um, the only real chance of the first half fell to Brighton. It was Jahan Batch who was playing as their lone striker. Um, got a good shot away actually and Leno did well with diving down to his right hand side to make a decent save and that was the only real chance of the first half. We created very little, we didn't have a lot of movement up front, it was a very conservative performance actually. And we went in at half time at 0-0 and bearing in mind our poor record on this ground and away at Brighton in the league, we hadn't won there for nearly 40 years, you could understand why we were maybe not taking too many risks. But in the second half, whatever Arteta said at half-time seemed to work. We came out with a lot more energy and we did create um, a couple of good chances. But the first real chance, a couple of minutes into the second half, Saka had moved over to the left-hand side, did really well, put a great low cross into, into the six-yard box. A Bamiang arrived late, got in front of his defender from about four yards. Somehow his effort was saved by goalkeeper Sanchez. It more hit his leg than anything else, but it actually was a good save and it went out for a corner. You could say it was a bad miss, but I don't think a Bamiang did a lot wrong. He did well to get on the end of the cross and it was just uh, unfortunate that the goalkeeper just managed to get in the way of it really and, and put it over for a corner. We then had another chance a little while after that. It was Martinelli, a little bit quiet in this game. Maybe just uh, the game's catching up with him. Of course, he's played a lot of games in the last week when he hadn't played at all, had he, for, for a month before that. So you can understand why. But he nearly um, he nearly put us in front. But again, it was a good move. Emil Smith-Rowe was involved. Martinelli got a little bit of space inside the penalty area. Um, cut inside, got his just over the top of the crossbar it went um, and it stayed here. But the game changed on just after the hour mark when um, I said to replace Martinelli with Alexander Lacazette and within 29 seconds we'd scored and it was Lacazette who got the goal as well. You've got to give credit to Bukayo Saka, a fantastic run down the right hand side. He outpaced um, Dan Byrne 
uh, got into the penalty area, showed great awareness as well, got his head up, rolled the ball into Lacazette, took a good first touch, and his second touch was a drilled shot in at the near post. A fantastic goal uh, to make it 1-0. And of course, um, the last time we scored a goal from open play away from home in the Premier League was also scored by Alexander Lacazette at Liverpool. That was all the way back in September. But Lacazette did the job again. A really good goal it was, put us 1-0 up. Um, instead of really trying to kill the game off, though, we were more content to try to contain what we had Actually, um, Brighton didn't create a lot of chances. They did bring on our old mate Mo Payne later on in the game, and they brought on Trossard and, and Tony March as well as they really tried to go for it in the final 20 minutes. But they didn't really create a lot of chances. There was one effort, I think it was Prop had a shot, which Leno again saved well at his near post. But other than that, Brighton didn't really threaten us, but we defended really well. Um, we managed the game really well, and in the end, we managed to see it out uh, a really good and important, actually, 1 0 victory. So it did remind me quite a lot of the old days under George Graham and away performance, solid at the back uh, and looking dangerous on the counter attack, I say, especially in the second half where we really did deserve this victory. <laughs> Again, another performance where um, I wouldn't say anybody was really outstanding, but everybody put in a good shift. Everybody worked hard. Everybody did the job they was asked of them. It's difficult to, to single out any one player. A couple of players I do want to give praise to. I thought um, Rob Holding had another good, solid game at the back. His partnership with Pablo Mari looks to be developing well. In fact, Mari had a good game as well. I thought uh, the midfield wasn't that great, but those front three, those lads at the front, Thought um, Martinelli, maybe not his best game, but you can see the outlet that he is. It's work great. Saka, of course, with that fantastic assist. Uh, a great goal from Lacazette as well. But for me, I'm going to give the man of the match in this game to Emil Smith Rowe. Um, I thought throughout the game he was outstanding. Made some great intelligent movement. Really, really good with the ball. Uh, helped move it forward nice and quickly. Showed some really nice touches. Uh, and I feel as though, you know, this is a performance that, he's, that we've been waiting to see from him away from home. You know, fair enough against Chelsea, he played well. But going away from home in a tough game, that's when you have to really step up. And I thought he did that. You know, Saka obviously got mad at a match on Amazon Prime. You can understand why. A fantastic performance with him again. But I just want to give this one um, just slightly different. I just felt he deserves it really for um, the way he's coming to the team and performed so well now for a few games. So I'm going to give man of the match to Emil smith -Rowe. So another great win actually. Um, we, we needed um, to follow up the Chelsea game with another victory. It didn't really matter how we got it. Um, and yes, it, it wasn't the greatest performance, but sometimes away from home, you just got to dig in and get the job done. And that was exactly what we did. And we need to keep doing this now. We need to build on these two wins. We've got another big game away at West Bromwich Albion at the weekend. Don't expect that will be easy because they lost 5-0 at home. They're going to bounce back from that. There's no way Sam Allardyce will accept that. Um, so you've got to expect a response from them. It's going to be another tough game. But if we dig in like this, if we defend well and we keep the same energy on the counter-attack, I can see us getting another victory. And then suddenly, from looking in relegation trouble, we could be challenging again in the top six, couldn't we? So it shows how quickly things can change. I thought yesterday was a sort of performance away from home that are going to start to become a lot more common under Mikel Arteta. Very similar to the game at Manchester United, of course, back in November, uh, which was our last away victory. A very similar type of performance. And I think that this is going to be the, the blueprint now. But if you look back to the end of last season as well, it was a couple of away games with a very similar type of way we set up uh, and the type of tactics that we use. And say the games away at Southampton and Wolves when we won away from home, keeping clean sheets. And you can see this is where Arteta is going to be taking us forward. In fact, we've been fairly solid away from home. This was our fourth clean sheet in the Premier League. Nobody's kept more away clean sheets than us this season. Aston Villa have also kept four. Um, so it just goes to show that there are signs of progress. There are positives to, to be taken from, even though we've had a poor run. Um, you can see that um, we may be coming through that now. And I think things are going to be a lot brighter going into 2021. It's just, uh, I suppose it was a nice bookend to, to 2020, wasn't it? We won our first two games of the year against Manchester United and Leeds. And then we've won our last two games of the year against Chelsea and Brighton. So maybe what's gone on in between has been a bit up and down. Um, but at least we finished the year on a high. So that's that there, a little um, review of yesterday's uh, great victory away at Brighton. Um, let me know what, what you thought about the performance, about the team selection, uh, and about anything else to do with, with the club at the moment. There's a lot of transfer talk, obviously, with Isco and Diego Costa and stuff like this. And um, personally, I was really impressed with um, Ease Basuma for Brighton. I thought he was brilliant in the field again for them. He impresses me every time I see them play, um, and he'd be a great signing for us, wouldn't he? Can you imagine a midfield of him and Thomas Partey? 
uh, and that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? And with those three youngsters just in front, you can see the future being quite bright. So if we're going to buy anybody in this transfer window, I would definitely be um, in favour of buying Eve Basuma. But let me know what you think in the comments. Who do you think we should we should target in this transfer window? And how do you see 2021 working out? Stay tuned to the channel because I've got lots of stuff coming up. On Friday evening, I'll be doing a preview of the West Brom Albion game. I'm hoping to get a West Brom fan on. But if not, um, I'm sure Melbourne will come on and we can look back on the previous meetings and the players that's played for both clubs, all the usual stuff as well. So that'll be on Friday evening. And then I'll also be putting out a, a full preview of that game as well, um, probably on Saturday. Um, and then, of course, the, the game on, on Saturday night, I'll be doing a watch along of that as well again. I um, hope you can join me for that. Um, it should be a, a good game. Hopefully, another Arsenal, a good, another good Arsenal performance, another victory will be nice for me. So, so stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't done so already, please click the subscribe button down in the corner there. Please give this video the thumbs up as well and share it around. Um, stay tuned to the channel. Lots of great stuff coming up. And of course, in the meantime, as always, another good victory for Arsenal. Final game of 2020. Come on, you gunners.